To the American Indian, all animals and nature, the sky and the earth, all the creatures that walk, crawl, or fly were important to everyday life. They were thought of and talked of as though they were real people. Our first story, The Dancing Stars, is an Iroquois legend. To the great Iroquois nation in the northeastern part of the United States, the great bear sang and the moon smiled and talked. Everything was a creation of the Great Spirit. Our second story, The Friendly Wolf, comes from the Dakotas, where we find the Plains Indians. Their beliefs were the same as their Iroquois cousins. They respected all animals, and they learned to live with them. The Plains Indians are made up of tribes that we've all heard of. The Sioux, Arakara, Blackfoot, Cheyenne, Pawnee, the Cree, the Nez Perce, Kiowa, Comanche, Crow, the Ojibwe, the Shoshone, the Arapaho, and the Ute, and a few others. They were hunters, depending mostly on the buffalo for their food, for their clothing, and the covering for their teepees. They also hunted elk and antelope and deer. They ate the wild turnip and wild rice. I suppose they're called wild because they were not planted and cultivated by man. They were planted in the ground by the Great Spirit for our use. Now, imagine yourself sitting around a flickering indoor fire in the lodgings of your tribe. It is night, which is the best time for storytelling. The old storyteller is about to begin his stories, and it is cold outside. The soft winter snow is lightly falling. In the distance, you can hear the drumming and the singing. You and the other Indians are waiting for the storyteller to begin. Now, listen to the tales of the dancing stars and the friendly wolf. Once long ago, when the sky and the stars and the moon and Mother Earth were just beginning, seven brothers were playing in the forest. They loved to run and dance in the forest, always together, never separated. One evening, just as the sun was going down, the brothers heard someone singing. It was a beautiful, beautiful song coming from some faraway place. They danced away, following the sound of the music. Suddenly it was night. The little boys looked down and saw the trees and their forest, their people's longhouses, all the things they knew about glowing in the moonlight far below them. They were in the sky, still dancing to the strange and beautiful music. They went up and up and up, and the mysterious song grew louder and even more beautiful. They could hear the words clearly now. A hunter pursued me, and I came to the sky, and now I am lost. But I will watch over you in your warm little cave here in the sky. So sleep, little ones, sleep. Then they saw a great black bear. Her belt and necklace were made of shiny white clamshells, and her beautiful tail was made of stars. In fact, stars were twinkling at her toes and her nose. It was the great bear who was singing the lullaby. They danced long into the night. At last, they stopped, for they wanted to go home. They asked the moon to show them the way. 
But the moon smiled gently and said, You will live here in the sky with the stars and I, for we enjoy your dancing. Suddenly the boys no longer felt tired, and they no longer wished to go home. They started to dance again, and the great bear sang more sweetly than before. Then a bright shining star grew around each boy. The smallest brother heard a voice calling his name. It was the voice of his mother. The little boy ran toward the voice as fast as his feet would go, and the star around him left a bright, shiny trail. Don't go, don't go, cried the moon, and the stars, and his brothers. But the little boy would not listen. He fell past the clouds and the trees, reaching for the earth and the sound of his mother's voice. He saw his mother and reached out to take her hand. Then he landed. His mother cried when she saw that instead of her son, there was a hole in the ground made by a falling star. She looked up at the sky and called to her other sons, Stay there! Do not come down! She did not want them to become falling stars. The brothers waved to their mother, for they understood, and they danced on. The mother cried, and her tears fell into the hole where the star had fallen. A little sprout began to grow. It grew faster and faster, taller and taller, up into the sky. The little brother was now a tree, reaching high into the sky to be with his brothers again. Finally it reached the great bear and the dancing brothers. They were very happy to have their littlest brother back with them. To this day, when you walk through a forest, you will see the pine tree. It is the tallest tree in the forest, and at night, you can see the brothers still dancing to the lullaby of the great bear as she sings to her little cubs. It happened during berry picking time. This was in the long ago when people and animals lived together and talked to each other. It was the time when the berries were ripe and the camps were set up near the berry bushes, which grew in the valley. The berries were eaten right off the bush. Little Cloud and his little sister, Bright Eyes, ate all the berries their little stomachs could hold. Little Cloud became tired of berry picking and decided to climb the hills near the valley. He took Bright Eyes with him. They climbed higher and higher to where the grizzly bears and bighorn sheep live. Little Cloud wanted to see the place where the eagles lived, way up on top. It began to get dark. Little Cloud was afraid. He knew there were mountain lions and wolves in the hills, and the great wolf of the mountains. They looked around for a place to stay. It became darker and colder, and Bright Eyes began to cry. Then, as the owls hooted around them, they saw a small cave, so they crawled in and went to sleep. Suddenly, a little cloud was awakened by the loud thunder and cold wind of a fierce storm. In the opening of the cave, he saw the great wolf of the mountains, he closed his eyes tightly and prayed that the wolf would not harm them. As the storm passed, he became quiet. Little Cloud opened his eyes. No wolf. Bright Eyes was still asleep. Maybe he had been dreaming. When the morning came, Little Cloud woke Bright Eyes, and they left the cave quickly. Little Cloud did not tell Bright Eyes of his night visitor, but he knew it wasn't a dream. The tracks in the sand told him so. 
As the day went on, they became tired and rested near a stream. The water tasted good. Suddenly they saw the great wolf. Remembering that the wolf did not harm them, Little Cloud said, Please, great wolf of the mountain, we are lost. Help us to return home. The wolf looked kindly at the children. The great wolf reminded Little Cloud of the dogs at camp, with his tongue hanging out and his face smiling. Then the great wolf said, It was my cave you slept in last night. Have no fear. I will take you home. Stay close to me. The wolf started off and waited whenever the children fell behind. He would run a little and stop, and run a little and stop. He let Bright Eyes ride on his back when she grew too tired to walk. Then he led them to berry bushes to eat sweet berries so they wouldn't be hungry. Finally, they reached the top of the hill that they had first climbed. From the hill, they could see their families and friends. They were very, very happy. They wanted the wolf to stay with them, but the great wolf refused. He could not go closer to the camp because there were dogs there. Anyway, I would not be happy living in a camp. I am a wanderer. I go with my wolf friends to many places. Do not be sad. I will always remember you. And you will hear my call in the early night and think of me. As the children came down to the camp, the men raced on their horses to meet them. They picked them up and joyfully rode into camp. There was much excitement and happiness at their return. When the people heard Little Cloud's story of how the wolf had saved them, they went to the top of the hill and thanked him. They brought him beautiful gifts and food. The chiefs sat in a circle and smoked the pipe of peace. It was the sign of friendship forever between the Indians and the wolves. That friendship still lasts. Wherever the Indians traveled, hunted, laughed, or prayed, it was a tribal affair. They were great believers in togetherness, and that togetherness always included the animals. The storytellers were very important people in all tribes. They were respected for their wisdom, and they were greatly loved. Their stories had deep meanings, for all of the customs and beliefs of the Indians had a story or a legend behind them. Many of these stories are in your school and public library. Go, read, enjoy the stories of the American Indian, and share a story with a friend, so our tales will never end. The preceding program was funded in part by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting.